Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mokobe, the host of this show, Mokobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. Welcome once again, I have a great guest for you. I have an experienced litigator, I have an arbitrator of repute. We are going to talk about all things arbitration for entrepreneurs, but as always, I'd like my guests to be the ones to introduce themselves. Mr. Welcome Mr. Fashole Luke II. Thank you, Mr. Mokobe. Yes. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much. Please do me the kindness of introducing yourself in more detail, okay. background, professional experience, etc. Okay, my mate with Vashola Luke second, and I'm an <coughs> English trained barrister. Um, been in practice here in Botswana for the last 34 years. Um, I've done some very, very interesting landmark cases in this country. Um, a lot of people recognize me for the famous uh, Marietta Bosch case. <laughs> the most sensational murder trial that took place in this country. Yes. <clears throat> um, but I'm also an arbitrator, which I've done for over 25 years. Um, I enjoy that. Uh, I don't enjoy going to court very much anymore. Well, uh, I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, my main focus is on arbitration. Uh, when we first met, you were with a law firm called Fulani Luke and Associates many, yes. many, many years ago. Yes. I remember I met you when you were literally getting admitted. Yes. I was with, uh, with Mr. Mr. Fulani in court. How has the journey been uh, on the legal side before we talk about arbitration? Well, it's pretty interesting. I mean, I think I can still remember the date we met. It was the 7th of April of 1989. Mm -hmm. uh, the day in which I was admitted to the, I was admitted to uh, the bar here. Yes. It was a very strange day because my uncle and my godfather was the Chief Justice of Botswana, uh, the late uh, Honorable Dr. Justice E. Lipsy Luke. Mm. And I recall I was supposed to be admitted by him. And I remember it was an emotion there on a Friday. And we got to the end of the, the row and I was not admitted. And I was then advised by the, George's, the, the, the judge's clerk that um, my matter had been postponed or put forward before Mr. Justice Barrington Jones. Mm. And that's where my admission took place. <laughs> I, I, now that you mentioned the date, that was the date when I was admitted as a lawyer for the first time. Now that you mentioned the date, I'm making the connection. Really? So we have a history together. So we were admitted on the same day? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. wow. You had obviously been practicing in other in parts of the world. Yes. I was going to start practicing for the first time. Oh, there, really? Because I was working for Minchin and Kelly. Yes, I remember that. All right. Why arbitration? Let's get to the subject. Why do you believe in arbitration as a system of dispute resolution? I was first... Uh, introduced to arbitration by a professor who lived next door to us in Sierra Leone, a chap called Professor Joko Smart. I was about 15. Mm. And he told me that I am unlike other lawyers in this country. I make my money by arbitration. And I go every year to Geneva between June and September. And in those three months, I deal with arbitrations dealing with the law of the sea, which pays me in excess of 500,000 pounds. 
That's where I make my money. <laughs> <laughs> and I was fascinated by that. Yes. Yes. Wow. And uh, indeed, uh, when you compare it to mediation and to other forms of alternative dispute resolution, you've chosen uh, it. Why do you think it has a superior quality apart from the, apart from the financial side? I, I wouldn't say it it's necessarily has uh, superior um, facilities mm. um, over, over mediation or other forms of alternative dispute resolution. But what I like about it is, is the finality. Mm -hmm. You see, arbitration, when you give an award, your award is final. Generally, unless the arbitration clause says something different, when you give an award, it's final. There's no appeal. Uh, there's no review of the award given by the arbitrator. So that's one of the things I like about arbitration. I so you always want to, but do you not have to make that a part of the pre-arbitration agreement? Of course. That's yes. why I said yes. the arbitration okay. agreement. Okay. What would you say are the key principles that have guided you in your, entry, in your arbitration journey? And I would like to really think of it as an arbitration stroke entrepreneurship journey. Because you are an entrepreneur in a sense. Yeah. Well, I think one, you, you look at the, the rule of law. Mm -hmm. um, you must be impartial. You must be fair. Uh, and, and that is the process that you must uh, follow. But I've been very fortunate and privileged to have met the finest arbitrators in the world. Um, I've had the privilege of meeting Lord Bingham. Uh, who Who's was that? Lord Bingham? Yes, Lord, Lord Bingham. Yes, Bingham was uh, Master of Rolls of England and Wales. He was Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales. Mm -hmm. He was also President of the Supreme Court of England and Wales. Mm -hmm. And I recall he was giving a rule of law um, lecture at the IBA conference in Spain, in Madrid, in uh, 2000, and I think it was eight. 2009, mm. and I had the privilege of riding on a coach with him mm -hmm. for an hour mm. and listening to this. For an hour. Yeah. For an hour. Yes. Mm. With this extraordinary man. Mm. I mean, he is absolutely brilliant. Mm. And so when you listen to people like that, you follow people like that, uh, you don't know him, but then you have people like Professor Jan Paulsen, mm -hmm. I think you've heard of the, the famous arbitration book, Hunter and Redfern. I've come across it. I've yeah. met uh, mm. Professor Martin Hunter, I've been taught by Martin Hunter. Mm. So when you meet people like these, you know, internationally, mm. they have a profound impact and influence on you. Wow. Yeah. Um, now, the one thing that we talk about as entrepreneurs is resilience and perseverance. To what extent has this uh, key uh, trait played a role in your arbitration career? Resilience is very important. Mm. Arbitration, in many ways, is a club. Uh, big international, for example, international arbitration. You find uh, a lot of old white men dominate mm. uh, the arbitration sphere. Mm. And so you really need a lot of resilience to break into that club. Um, one of the things I've done is, is I've had phenomenal training. I did a diploma in international commercial arbitration mm -hmm. um, hosted by the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, which is regarded as the Rolls-Royce uh, <laughs> of <laughs> arbitration training in the world. Yes. And, and so you have to be very, very resilient. Mm. to break into that club. But it's happening. Is there any particular things physically or mechanically that you know, the viewer can learn from that you did, that you encourage people to do to show that resilience? I think it's important that you take trick courses. Mm. I think it's very important that you, you go to seminars, you go to conferences, where the very best operators in the world are. Because you really learn from the, the very best. I, mean, I trained with Professor Jan Paulsen. Mm. 
I mean, what I learned from Professor Jan Pauls in the two weeks at the University of Miami mm. would have taken me probably five years to learn to learn on my on, own. on your own. Yes. yes, definitely. So it made a huge impact. Yes, definitely. Mm. Okay, so so in other words, perseverance is a very very key ingredient. Uh, would you say it's more? Would you say it's more so in litigation as a you know as a, as an attorney of the High Court of Botswana? Then it's more so in arbitration than it was in, lit in, in, in litigation. Litigation, I did a lot of. Mm. So I had a lot of practice. At, I mean, I was in court every day, virtually. Yeah, I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, I mean, and uh, I think you remember the, um, the Honorable Jack, Justin Jack Adako. Yes. We yes. were in, I was in his court virtually every day. Mm. I mean, eventually for about five or six, seven years. And I learned a, I learned a great deal of criminal law. That's how I changed to become a, a criminal lawyer, was just Jack Adako, mm. who made me do that. Because I had no interest whatsoever yes. in criminal law. But he made it interesting. Yes, he did. Mm. Fascinating. Mm. <laughs> yes. I know him. I've appeared before. Yes, it was a very dull moment in his yeah. court. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's go further now, talk about the act itself. There is a somewhat a cake act in Botswana yes. called the Arbitration Act. Yes, of 1959. Yes. yes. Can yes. you talk about that act? I always wonder why it has never been updated or changed. I think the act is supposed to be updated. I think it, it, there is a bill with the Attorney General's office. Mm. They are working on it. They've been um, working for, on it for decades. Well, so I gather. <laughs> yeah. But one of the good things is that our courts have interpreted and have given judgments which are very, very uh, forward-thinking. Our courts are very pro-arbitration. And if you look at a judgment, for example, of uh, Mr. Justice uh, um, Newman, Newman in yes. Southern District Council against Vlog, I think it's reported in 2010. Mm. Yes, I know that judgment. Yes. I know Mr. Flug. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, the late Mr. Flug now. Yeah, yes. yes, the late Mr. Flug. Yes. yes. Um, it's a brilliant judgment mm. and really takes our law very forward. So the fact that that act is very antiquated, the courts have done a great deal to bring our arbitration laws up to speed, as it were. Would you care to share some of the key provisions of the Act? Well, the key provision to the Act is basically that an arbitration is basically final, right? Mm. Um, courts will not interfere with uh, an arbitration award given by an arbitrator in the Act, unless, of course, the arbitrator has misconducted himself or misconducted the proceedings. Um, and so, the, the Act allows uh, parties to choose an arbitrator mm. uh, to resolve their dispute. And courts will not interfere in the award given by the arbitrator, unless, of course, those two um, indicators I gave earlier yes. Uh, yes. Are, are fulfilled. Okay. Let me ask you about your personal experience. Is there any particular arbitration matter or uh, that, that really caught your fancy, which is a source of great pride for you that you want to share with the viewer? Is it you know, a personal arbitration that I did or arbitration? No, no the that one I that you, you either presided over or that you were part of yes, as, as one of the parties, representing one of the parties. I had a very interesting arbitration, which I did uh, representing a, a major airline. Mm -hmm. I was a sole arbitrator in that case. And um, an employee of this airline had brought an action against the, the airline. Mm -hmm. And it was an extraordinary arbitration in that it was a whole day's arbitration. It started about 7.30 in the morning and went on till about 7.30 in the evening. And we had about three or four breaks, and that, half an hour breaks, and that was it. The whole day, nonstop, 
<laughs> and then writing the award, preparing the award, writing the award uh, two, three days later, mm. and then giving the award was a very, very interesting day. I will never forget that arbitration. Mm. Mm. Is it because the litigants were interesting or is it because of the, the restricted time frame within which, within which you had to decide? Combination of both. Mm -hmm. Combination of both. Um, the the parties were interesting, mm. um, but also the, the 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 subject matter of the arbitration mm. was also very interesting. Because sometimes you, you get involved in areas with which you are not familiar. You have to teach yourself as you go yeah. along. Oh yeah, and absolutely. apply basic principles. Well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So um, talking about the the, the the twenty years that you know that you've been an arbitrator more so than a litigator. Um, can you settle the argument between the relative costs of litigation versus arbitration? Speak to the costs involved and speak to why you believe arbitration is an advantage over litigation, if you, if you take that view. I would think arbitration is an advantage over litigation because when an arbitration, the parties have the right to choose who's going to decide their matter. They decide the judge, basically. Yes. So that is so different from, from a trial. Because in a trial, you don't know who your judge is going to be. Secondly, your judge may not have an ex the experience of determining a very complex commercial matter that the parties would have. Mm -hmm. So for example, you may have a judge who has never dealt with a commercial matter. At all. At all. Mm -hmm. Dealing with a very highly complex uh, dispute. And so that judge perhaps may not even understand what you are saying, mm -hmm. or the parties are saying. There may be, that may be a difficult thing for you to, or for the parties to, to, to handle. So I always say it is very, very important for the parties to be able to decide who is going to be the judge in their matter. And I think that's where the arbitration has an advantage. Let's talk costs. I, I did touch on that. Yes. Because uh, the, the biggest complaint or the pushback against arbitration is that in addition to all the other costs, you're paying the judge. So it's inherently more expensive. Generally, yes. Arbitration has become expensive. Mm. And especially with these big international commercial arbitrations, because the parties tend to, especially with these big law firms, Burden the arbitrators with a whole host of documentation, which the arbitrator has to read. And so it pushes up the price and the cost of an arbitration significantly. And some lawyers deliberately bury the arbitrator with, with, with paperwork. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Because they want to earn fees. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, uh, but having said all that, um, what would you be your advice to an entrepreneur who may not necessarily have be deep pocketed enough, but have an otherwise valid case? Do you believe that they should still consider arbitration? I think so. I think a good arbitrator is able to control. Mm. Uh, a good arbitrator is able to control costs. Mm. A good arbitrator is able to tell and tell the parties that look, mm. these documents are not necessarily important for the resolution of this dispute. Mm. And frankly, you're wasting time, you're wasting uh, my time, you're wasting your time. And you're running up a bill. Exactly. Mm. So it is very important, that's why it says it's very important to choose your arbitrator very carefully. But don't these uh, litigants have the ability of then interrupting the proceedings and even bringing in the court into play to decide on the fairness or otherwise of certain decisions? Yes, but then you see one thing: an arbitrator must have courage, which is very important. It is a very important characteristic of an arbitrator: is courage. Mm -hmm. Courage 
that you are not afraid of the litigants. You are not afraid of the parties in front of you. You must have the courage to tell the parties that, look, this action that you are taking does not further your case in any way. And tell the parties that these are the objects of this case. One, two, three, four. These are the issues. And you stick to those. And you stick to those issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your experience, does it work? I think it does, to some extent. Most of the time. Yes, it okay. does. Now, um, there are types of uh, arbitration matters. There's commercial disputes and there's construction disputes. Which ones do you generally gravitate towards and why? Well, this, you've mentioned commercial, you've mentioned uh, construction, but there's also investment to here. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, which I do quite a bit of because mm -hmm. I'm on the, I'm on the panel of the World Bank. Wow. And yes. So I, I very do. impressive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I give all the glory to God. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And um, so, so you tend to gravitate towards which types of arbitrage? Investments, investments, disputes. Mm -hmm. and commercial dispute. Okay. So someone just seeing you for the first time and being interested in finding an arbitrator, can you say one or two words to explain to them <coughs> the areas you're competent in and, and, and why? Because uh, it would be helpful to the entrepreneurs to be able to know what is a, who is and what is available out there. Well, I can deal with a lot of matters in arbitration. I mean, I had a very varied practice. So I've dealt with several areas of the law. And so that is very important in helping me deal with disputes that come before me. So for example, if a labor dispute came, mm. I'm able to handle it because I've dealt with a lot of labor employment, matters. Uh, labor matters yes. as, as a lawyer. Yes. So there are areas, there are so many areas that I have dealt with uh, when so, I was back so in you, the law. You, you generally don't specialize as no, such because no. you prepared to be. Um, now, I, I always say to young entrepreneurs that sometimes are mentor that it's important to have fun in whatever yes, you do. Absolutely. Um, I know you like travel. Yes. What would you say? How do you keep it lively? How do you keep it fun? Well, you enjoy it. I think you, you don't take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. um, watch other people. Listen to other people. Read books. Educate yourself. So important. Mm. And that is sufficient to keep it lively. Is there, are there no particular tricks that you use during the arbitration themselves to keep, to keep the, uh, the whole thing exciting? Or well, you don't go out of your way to no 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 no, no 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 I don't <laughs> <laughs> no I think you've answered my question um, now in terms of um, Botswana as an environment do you think that the market is sufficiently sophisticated or mature to recognize the value of arbitration? I think Botswana does recognize the, the, the value of, it, of arbitration. Mm. I think a, a lot of people, when we, I mean, many years ago, we used to have, remember, we used to have huge backlogs in mm. the court. Mm. And so a lot of people did uh, put in arbitration clauses in their contracts. And I think arbitration is very important because in attracting FDI mm. into the country, a lot of these big investors insist on arbitration clauses in their contracts with, uh, with the government, for example. And I think even I think the government itself recognizes, I think now that most of the contracts, government contracts, they're arbitration clauses, are they not? I think you're correct. Yeah. Mm. So I think they've recognized that Arbitration is a major 
uh, dispute resolution mechanism. Okay. Tell me why about the system of arbitration so far as Paris is concerned, because there is a structure, there's a system where you settle disputes in, the, in Paris. Uh, can help, help the viewer and myself understand what is that about? In, uh, well, the reason why Paris is so important, that's where the, that's where the ICC is based, mm -hmm. the International Chamber of Commerce. The ICC is the largest arbitration um, dispute resolution court in the world. The International Court of Arbitration is based in Paris. Uh, yes, they do have offices in New York. They have offices in uh, in London, I believe. Um, but the headquarters of the ICC is in Paris. Mm. Does it then make sense for government to include it in clauses that disputes are settled through ICC system? Doesn't that just exponentially explode the cost? What what they should do is, yes, let's make this ICC go this arbitration governed by the ICC, but we want the seat to be in Botswana. Mm -hmm. Or we want the arbitration, the location of the arbitration to be in Botswana. You can stipulate that in your arbitration clause. Doesn't necessarily have to go to Paris. Mm -hmm. And then you apply the Paris rules here. Yes, exactly. Okay. What is unique or special about the Paris rules? The Paris rules? I should see what, as I said, I should see is the biggest mm. arbitration institution in the world mm. and the, the the policies and the rules the arbitration rules are well and time tested mm -hmm. so it is an extraordinary uh, system to resolve uh, disputes yeah can you say a word or two about FIDIC because there's another system FIDIC is more construction, isn't it? Yes, but, yeah. uh, but there's arbitration is inbuilt. In yes, the yeah, yeah, they uh, do. Yes. I mean, a lot of these construction contracts have FIDIC arbitration clauses in them. Mm. Um, and the FIDIC rules. You have the yellow. And the, the yellow, the and green, the red, the red, the red green. The green, yes. Are, are, are you able to, to help <laughs> us understand that? Those colors. <laughs> For a fee, yes. <laughs> Okay, all right. So, uh, so uh, I want I want to push you beyond. Uh, Indeed. Beyond the now, as we come closer to the end of um, the end of our conversation, um, is there something motivational, something as inspirational that you'd want to share with the viewer when we talk about entrepreneurs and arbitration? You see, one of the things that has just happened is the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement agreement has just come into been signed by I think 55 African countries because of this pandemic it has not come into force it's been postponed to next year but the wonderful thing about this uh, Africa continental free trade area is that it is going to be the largest trading block in the whole world and so there's going to be so much business between African countries. And of course, with a lot of trading, there are disputes. And as a result of those species, disputes, those disputes are going to have to be resolved by arbitration. So there was a big, big area for us and for entrepreneurs and business people in the very near future. And of course, with respect to the, the pandemic that we're now facing, there are considerable opportunities uh, are going to arise. A lot of contracts are going to be, are not going to proceed because of forced doctrine of forced majority, etc. So there, every, problem sees opportunities. I think it was Sir Winston Churchill, the great uh, Prime Minister of England, who said, the pessimist sees a problem. A pessimist sees a problem with every difficulty. The optimist sees an opportunity with every problem he or she faces. Mm. 
Mm, absolutely. That is beautiful. All right. This is the part of our discussion where you get to ask me one question on, on, uh, on any subject, obviously, but within reason. <laughs> yeah. So what is it, why do you enjoy arbitration? And why do you enjoy these Mohobin nuggets, as it were? Those are two different questions, but really? let me try and answer them. <laughs> okay. I, I love arbitration. I mean, I am a fellow of uh, uh, you know, the Botswana Institute of Arbitrators. Yes. And uh, you know, I trained in South Africa. And I, I, I could see the limitations of, of litigation. When I, I went for training, it was before uh, the high court rules were loosened yes. to make it easier for, through this, uh, this, uh, this system where, 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 where the parties can actually be encouraged to settle uh, these many meetings. Those days, it was very, very clear that the backlog in the courts and the expense, it was intractable. I know. So, so that is the reason I got involved. That's why I registered. That's why I became an arbitrator. But because I, I got so involved in property development and uh, in other aspects, I did not do what you did. I did not hone down and focus. So <laughs> I just used it as a skill set which okay. I can apply. In right. industry, okay. but I, I, you know, everything you are saying, I was not in my head vigorously because I agree with <laughs> with what you are saying. But as okay. for the nuggets, um, the idea is to have this kind of information uh, disseminated to the public, to have a platform where people like such as yourself, I'm willing to bet most of my young entrepreneurial founders have never heard of Fashele Look the second. So we need to bring uh, wisdom, knowledge, skills, uh, such as you have through through a, a platform like this, where we can also infuse, energize, inspire, and empower young entrepreneurs and be part of this uh, ecosystem where we help each other. So I hope I've answered both of your, of your questions. Yes, you have. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you very you. much. Thank you. All right. So Mr. Uh, Luke, you've been a great guest, but before we part, I would like you to share your contact details. Uh, if you are present on social media, any platforms, What's up? so that people can not only uh, get in touch with you for your services, but perhaps continue this conversation further. WhatsApp, you can reach me on WhatsApp. It's the very best way to reach me because um, I travel a lot. And my WhatsApp number is plus two six seven seven five seven five three six one two. Okay. And where your office is located in Kaburun? My offices are located in uh, Mohadisani. Um, but generally, the best way to reach me is on WhatsApp because, I'm, as I said, I'm always out of the country. Okay. All right. So people should take a advantage during COVID and find you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. You've All been right. a wonderful guest. Thank, Thank you. Thank you sir. so much for taking the time out to be with us. You're most welcome. Uh, you've been a very insightful interview, and we uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Right. God bless you. Thank you very much. Right.